So in this video, I will be trying to learn to code by first, finding a problem that I have in 3D. Second, thinking of possible ways I could solve the problem I have. And then, of course, actually coding it. And I have to solve this problem with code in three days. And if I don't, I will have to donate money to a dog shelter. So hopefully I can finish it in time and I won't have to donate to a dog shelter. Wait, what? Found a problem that I really hate doing and that is generating these images. And this is just a really annoying thing to do. Very boring, very tedious. So I thought, hey, this could be a great thing I could try to solve with code because I'll be highly motivated to finish it. So that is the problem, generating 360 previews of a 3D object. And that's the thing I would like to solve with code. Usually when it comes to coding, it is done inside of Visual Studio Code using either JavaScript or Python. These are the most popular coding languages. I'll be using Python in this case, but I will not be coding inside of Visual Studio Code. Rather, I'll code inside of Blender, specifically the Blender scripting tab. This scripting tab is used to create some amazing, amazing stuff. For example, this Nebula generator, you just literally run some code and it will generate a nebula inside of Blender. But in my case, I will be using it to just move the camera from one place to another and then just exporting images. So that is how we're gonna try to do it. Day one starts now. Let's jump inside of Blender and start testing and learning things. Day one starts now. Hey, it's me from the future. So the first thing I did was try to move the camera with code. I watched a bunch of tutorials and after like two hours, to my surprise, I was able to move the camera with code. So I was very happy about that. I took an hour break and I moved on to rendering. From my research beforehand, I thought this will be the easy part, but as you can see by my webcam in the bottom right, you can see the sun slowly going down as I code because it took like four hours to just export one single image. And I'm not sure why, but <laughs> it basically it took really long, but I was successful in achieving both of my goals for day one and we can safely move on to day two. Two. Let's go check out the new to-do list and I think we could check out the code I did yesterday. It's very bad code, but it's my code. And uh, yeah, maybe I should change my shirt because I didn't change it and I kind of stink. All right, I got my new shirt on and this is the to-do list for day two. So the first thing I'll need to do is to render multiple images. Currently, if I run my render.py script, you will see that it generates a folder called close-ups and in there we'll have our image. But if I move the camera and change the view mode and then run the script again, you will notice that, uh, yeah, it replaces the file. So I need to fix this bug. To-do list number two will be to toggle wireframe mode. Currently, I can do it very easily with my mouse, as you can see. For some reason, very hard to do with code. Hopefully, I can figure it out. And then to-do list number three is to start testing the code on an actual file. Hey, it's me from the future again. Day two went surprisingly well I was able to finish everything that I wanted to do I even started working on some extra features and overall day two was really awesome everything just made sense and started to click I have to give a shout out to blender stack overflow I was sometimes able to directly copy code from it and overall just a lot of info from stack overflow and the blender documentation was really awesome and really helpful so that was great and overall very happy about day two looking forward to day three well, the plan was that it's currently day three and I would flex my muscles on how I was able to finish it in time and everything's awesome. But to be honest, it was really, really bad. I was not able to finish it in time. It actually took three days more. It's currently day seven. 
of me trying to solve this issue a it is what it is but we can check out what the code actually does now i'll show you how it looks and how it works so this is all of the code i wrote and once we run it it will create a folder called 360 and in it we will have three more folders and in each of these folders we will have five images of that character in a 360 view i just quickly want to clarify that this was a simple 30 minute tedious task that I spent seven days on, about 25 hours, that simply generates 15 images. And to be honest, it's a uh, time well spent. I will probably be using this quite often. And I think it should repay the time it took in like 90 days. Cause yeah, so it's actually like a stock. It's like an investment. I, I, I it's time well spent in my opinion. Anyways, if you are wondering how the code works, I have simplified it into three functions. So the first function we'll call is called setup, which we call with the 3D object's name. And and this just basically sets up the camera and the target and the settings in Blender. Just a setup that we need to render these images. The second function we call is called go into camera view. And the third most important function is called preview 360. And we call it with the shading type. So wireframe, render or material. And this will then export the five PNG images. Of course, there's a bit more to it than these three functions. So if you want to check out the code for yourself, I have left the GitHub link in the description. Don't click here because you have to stop procrastinating. But after you stop procrastinating, you can watch this. But first, stop procrastinating and do the thing and then watch this. But first, you know what to do. But then, you know, you know, you know, you know.